What is up everyone? It's Caleb the Video Maker 2. This video we are going to be talking about comments. Now I know if you've ever programmed before you're probably like, oh do we really need a whole video over comments? Come on, it's easy. Yes it is easy, but I'm hoping to do more than just teach you comments. I'm hoping to explain when to use them, how to use them, what to do, and what not to do. So <laughs> hopefully this is a little bit more helpful than Hey, here's how you make a comment. And if you have no idea what a comment is, that's fine too. <laughs> so let's get started. You can see that I listed all of the files in my working directory. And these are the files we've worked with so far in this series. I am going to work with this eggs file again, and I'm going to add some comments to it. So let's open it. And see, there are two types of comments. The first is called a single line comment. And to make a single line comment, you use two forward slashes. So go into insert mode by pressing I and then press slash slash. This is a comment. Inside of this comment, we can put anything we like. The compiler just ignores it. I like eggs. There was some person on a TV show I used to watch. Uh, the Amanda Show. There was this girl on the bathroom episode who was always like, I like eggs. You know what I'm talking about? <gasps> yep, right there. <laughs> She would love working at this egg company. Anywho, let's get back on topic. <laughs> the other type of comment is called a multi-line comment. And the main difference is that a multi-line comment allows you to type as long as you want. All of this is inside of a single comment. That does not work with a single line comment. For example, if I typed right here, well, this is gonna give us a compiler error because it's no longer part of a comment. Each one of these comments has a benefit and a downside. For the single line comment, the obvious downside is, well, you can't do it on multiple lines. But the benefit of a single line comment is you can actually put it after code. For example, here, let me get rid of this line. So down here, I can actually explain something after the code. So I can put slash slash, this does something. And you can explain what it does if it's confusing. That way, when you come back five years from now, you can read what you had to say about this code and you can understand what it's doing. This has its downside, though, in that anything after this on this line will be counted as a comment. So I can't do stuff like int x, yada, yada, yada. It's all on the same line, so it still thinks it's a comment. With multi-line comments, you can actually put it inside of other code. So I could put a comment here and say, I think I might add more info here. So that way the user knows what to do, something like that. And this is actually gonna be fine for the compiler, except I typed that in wrong. <laughs> there we go. So often at the top of a program, you can put something like who wrote it, what the program is for, all that good stuff. And I have some strong words to say about these code blocks, let me tell you. Oftentimes you'll find extra asterisks, so that way it's extra clear what's going on here. There you go. And now we have this little section that kind of describes what the program does. And I'd probably put it above the include statement, but it, it's fine for now. You could just the same make these all single line comments using double slashes, but oftentimes you'll see it in a multi-line comment. Oh, these multi-line comments, I tell you, sometimes they introduce some really dumb stuff to code. And if you go to computer science school, the chances are they'll tell you to do this but personally, I think it's pretty dumb because one, rarely ever are you going to have code that's written by just one person. So why do you put an author here? I have no idea. And then let's say you work at this job and you're really bad at coding, so they fire you. Well, now the next guy has your code. So is he supposed to change this to, to his name? Because technically he didn't write it, but he worked on it. So I don't know, I think that's stupid. <laughs> The description, and eh, that might be useful. That might be able to say, hey, what is this page for? The date, personally, I think that's stupid and they should get rid of that too. Like, why would you put a date on a document that is going to continually be updated? The first problem here is that that's assuming the code is never going to be changed. And if you try to fix that and say, oh, every time you change this code, you just got to update the date. Well, that's stupid because the chances are you're going to forget to do that. And two, why does it really matter? I don't know. Most programming companies are going to use something called source control. An example of this is Git or Subversion, etc. And all of those are going to keep track of when your changes are. So you don't need to put a date in there either. When I took a computer science class, I got points off on literally almost every project <laughs> because
because I didn't comment well enough. But the thing is, the teacher wanted me to comment so much that I had more comments than I had actual code. If you comment so much that that happens, when you change your code, you'll have to go search through your comments and update everything. And then what happens is, if you forget to update something, you have comments that are out of date. And nothing is more confusing than a comment that says code does something, and the code actually does something else. That comment is actually making it harder to understand, not easier. So I am one of those people who lean on less comments than more comments. Although I do think it is helpful to maybe give a sentence or if you have to, a couple sentences describing what a function does or what a section of code does. If it is complicated or hard to understand with a minute or more of studying. This could really help other people know what your code is doing. Just make sure you don't overdo it and describe every single detail. The point of the comment is so you know what the function or section of code does, not necessarily how or why it does every single thing the way it does. If you disagree and you think, hey, we should use tons of comments, give me your reasons why and I'll see what you have to say and maybe I'm wrong and maybe I should try to use comments more. But if you find yourself doing stuff like in x equals 5 plus 5 and then commenting x equals 10 or something, like you should be able to figure out the value of x just by looking at this. This is redundant information and actually lowers the quality of your code and will ruin your life. <sighs> so yeah, that is my argument for the day. I may have gotten a little off topic. There is one other thing I wanted to share with you, and that is if you are working on code and you're working on something, but you're not quite done with it, you can do what's called a to-do comment. And what you do is just say to-do and then explain what you need to do. The benefit of this is that when you need to go back and update your code, you can just search for anything that says to do to make sure you got everything done and that you can update the sections that you didn't finish. So I highly recommend trying to do that. And yeah, that will probably help you out and other people who are working with your code. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully I had some good insight for you. If you have any other information, please leave me a comment and I will uh, check it out. Thanks guys. Peace.